Nicholas, we uh, okay, thank you. There is a point to Yeah, well, let's see if we can make this one. The uh, presentation is called Microsilica Gel Bond for Explosion Proof Castables, and you'll find out the reason why I call it uh, what I, that title. Approximately a year ago, uh, when uh, given the um, abstracts for last year's Unite Cert, I thought, that what the, could we find a uh, very interesting topic? So I thought, why not take the stuff we presented 16 years ago at the last Unite Cert? And it was accepted, and we worked on it. And uh, these are results from uh, Unite Cert in 95 in Kyoto. And what you found that time was that the uh, ultra low or no cement castables could be made a setting by adding as little as half a percent of cement. However, if you also added half a percent of alpha bond, the setting became much, much quicker. And other combinations was also possible, but uh, it only set quick if you had a combination of alpha bond and cement indicated here and with one day, it's one day setting. Okay, next slide please. Uh, after 95, we have done uh, quite a lot of uh, hot modulus rupture uh, investigations on that system. And um, this is a comparison between what happens if you have 6% cement together with 8% microsilica, or if you omit the cement more or less totally. What we see here is that um, without cement, you can get surprisingly high uh, hot on Mars. Uh, about 20 megapascal at 1,500 is possible, and that's of course because you lack the uh, liquid that normally forms around 1,512. And those of you who attended Davis Bo's presentation recently, or one hour ago, in the other room, on phase diagrams, would understand why. Uh, Refractors on the load. Uh, is also a topic that I just touched, and um, here we have the same for similar castables, but also the green one here is a no silica castable with 6% cement. And the blue is microsilica with 6% cement. Drops very quickly because of excessive liquid formation, so please do not use equal amounts of cement and microsilica. It's not a good idea in those systems. Use very much reduced amounts of cement. So if you use half percent cement instead, you get the red one here, which actually outperforms the alumina seemingly. I'm not sure whether it actually does that, but uh, it's uh, immensely refractory. We are talking about 1,800 degrees here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, let's go to the microsilica surface. The uh, surface of silica, or at least microsilica and colloidal silica, are covered with uh, OH groups <coughs> that are able to hydrate or dissociate, more or less, depending on the uh, pH of the water. And if you measure the setup potential, you get the kind of, uh, yeah, it's a, in principle, it's not the surface uh, charge, but it's uh, close to the surface charge. And what we see here is that microsilicon water has a negative surface charge over the whole range of between 2 and 8 in this case. Which means for most of the uh, ranges where we talk about uh, run a neutral, it's excellent uh, electrostatic stabilization of such a slurry. But remember, it's negatively charged just on the surface. OK, let's have a look at the recipe. Um, this is basically the same as in the first slide from 95. What we have is this mixture of microsilica, 8%, half percent calcium aluminate cement, half a percent alpha bond, some fractions of white fused alumina, calcined alumina, and a dispersant uh, from. FS20. Okay, if you mix this, uh, it does, by the way, follow the Andreasen distribution with a Q value around 
0.25, so it's potentially self-long. If you mix the, I would say, fine parts of it, then make a slurry of them, the main microsilic, eight parts microsilic, half percent, half part cement, half part alpha bond, and the cast cement, then 4.15 parts water, and put that into a machine we have in our laboratory that measures connectivity, cyber potential, and pH simultaneously, and wait, you can get uh, pictures like this. After some time, in this case 25 hours, the set of potential starts increasing, the connectivity drops, and the pH value increases. And that is uh, common for most, uh, most of our... Um, uh, we, we had uh, several different uh, combinations of alpha bonds and then been through that uh, testing, and, and this is a good uh, representation of what happens. If you look at the same mixture with uh, aggregates and uh, measure the free flow and the migration flow, we get values like this. In this case, it's uh, slow decay with time, and then suddenly it drops uh, quite severely. Quite interestingly is that the viper flow and the free flow simultaneously gets to zero, and that uh, means that you produce quite a rigid gel, which is not easy to do anything about them. And also in this uh, setup potential machine, we noticed that the uh, hardened paste was uh, pretty uh, solid. But the machine was worked and uh, everything, well, it could take it. Okay, what happens? Uh, what we believe happens is that the um, cement goes into the solution as uh, calcium and uh, aluminate ions. The microsilic has negative charges. The calcium ions attach to those charges. And if you have two charges close to it or adjacent to each other, you may link these uh, silica balls or spheres. And uh, if you do that in a three dimension, you get the gel. Uh, why does alpha bond accelerate the setting? We believe that alpha bond is actually um, working as a nuclei for precipitation of the uh, aluminate so that uh, you remove the aluminate from the, from the liquid and since you're removing the aluminate it's possible to dissolve more of the cement and that's how, how it works if you only remove the calcium from the liquid you will probably uh, get into a stale situation where the uh, aluminate hinders uh, the solution of the cement. That's why it takes a long time without the alpha bond. Okay, uh, so we thought. Uh, yeah, it's plenty of time. <laughs> Ten minutes. <laughs> uh, so we thought. Okay, there's no. Uh, if this uh, me uh, mechanism is valid, uh, there shouldn't be any uh, hydraulic water and. Uh, we should have some uh, really nice explosion uh, resistance properties. So we applied on a, a Chinese standard. Uh, here's the standard: is uh, 50 millimeter cubes put into a furnace at temperature. You wait 30 minutes, and when you open the furnace, you inspect the sample and see if it's cracked or yeah, worse or better. So we uh, started with uh, 50 millimeter cubes of green, all the samples are green samples. So, okay, 450 degrees, microsilica gel bond, green, direct, it's wet. Okay, 450 degrees into the furnace. There's a nice looking gentleman coming from the left soon. Is that you? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's difficult to recognize, but it's me. <laughs> but listen carefully now. It's not real time, I had to cut away things. So it's some eight minutes or so. Uh, that's the start, and now it comes. Well, not very promising, is it? Okay, no, no reason to wait for half an hour, so let's open and see. A lot of steam coming. And, 
Oh my god, it's gone. It's disappeared. Magic. It's actually difficult to find any traces of it. So we have no reason to clean up before taking an S -type next test at lower temperature. Now, what, what we did was uh, we said it couldn't be like that. It must be because of low strength and high water pressure. So let's try with uh, dried samples. So we, we took the sample, the green one, and dried at 110 degrees. And th then everything got much better. And this uh, little film here shows what happens if you put in that dried sample at 800 degrees. And uh, particularly this part will not win an Oscar. I had to be a bit quick, it's very hot in front of that. <laughs> okay, half an hour goes, and we open the furnace. There's no bang this time. And it gets a bit hot again, so I'm rather quick there. <laughs> but the thing is, the sample is 100% intact, there's nothing, yeah. no cracks, nothing. And we have tried that up to 1200 degrees and uh, frankly it's indestructible once you dry it. Okay, success with the <laughs> movie part. Okay, the results. We compared this with the low cement castable, which is a fairly similar but with 6% cement. Um, without drying, the low cement takes up to 600 degrees before it the disintegrated like the one in the movie. Um, in this case, the no cement, this is another run by the way, it started at 350. Yeah. So we dried, low cement, 600 is the same, but it, it wasn't that destructive, it all split into two halves. While the uh, no cement was more or less indestructible, so we weren't able to make it crack or anything. What is the reason? Uh, some uh, weighing exercises, it's not so easy to see it right ahead, but if we compare the no cement or silica gel bond with low cement, <coughs> what we see here is that this uh, burgundy portion here is what doesn't go off after up to 110. So after drying at 110, there's 10, 11 percent left for the um, silica gel bond, and almost 30 percent for the low cement. And that is probably the reason. It's the hydrate the water. Okay, we thought that the flow was quite good for those samples. 108 percent cell flow with the small cone. So we said. Oh, why don't we reduce the amount of water? It's not good, it makes it explode. So, so we made the castables with three and a half percent instead. Got 60% cell flow. Fiber flow was down to 93%, quite, quite good actually. The green strength, interesting, was yeah, a quite significant increase when we talk about those tiny numbers. That's really called MR. But when you dry this stuff, you get really good values, and like 9 megapascal bending for something that doesn't contain cement, literally. I, I think that's, that's good. You must take some care when it's green, but when it's dry, it's, it's pretty good. Okay, 3.5% cement, that should do something with the explosion testing. And if we compare it with 4.15, as in the previous example, 3.5%, you see that uh, it, it shatters, but uh, you get up to 500 before the explosion comes. And it's probably because of the increase in the strength. Conclusions. Oh, I see, uh, unless they make it. <laughs> yeah, I'm impressed. Um, Okay, uh, just to sum up uh, these things, uh, it is possible, uh, as we have known for 20 years almost, that uh, we can make castables with very low amounts of cement in combination with very low amounts of alpha one. 
But the new thing is that we finally realized that this is, we are talking about gelling of microsilica and not a hydraulic bottle. <coughs> Mainly, there are, of course, I guess, there are traces of uh, hydraulic bonds as well, but it's not much. And this gelling is, we believe, it comes from the calcium ions, from the cement, and the alpha bond is accelerating by acting as nuclei for aluminum hydroxide so that you remove the aluminate from the liquid. And since uh, the gel <coughs> is not very crystalline or it doesn't contain uh, significant amounts of bonded water, we, uh, we uh, well, I think we have demonstrated that the castables become very explosive resistance, but you have to dry it get rid of the solid wet water. Um, if you're able to reduce the amount of water down to 3.5%, for instance, it's, uh, it's even better. So, thank you. Does anyone have any questions? We have time for maybe one or two questions. Okay. On behalf of the organizing committee, Bjorn, I'd like to thank you. Yeah. Here's a little thank bit. You very much.